Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome to World of Warships. In this match, I'm commanding the USS Des Moines, or at least a cruiser of the Des Moines class. And the Des Moines is the tier 10 US cruiser that initially I didn't really like. I didn't really see how you're supposed to play this thing. I didn't really understand when to uh, position yourself aggressively and when to be more defensive. But I'm getting the hang of the ship. And when you do, you can have some absolutely amazing games. Now, I am no Flamouche by any chance, or um, any of those super elite players, but this was a really, really good match for me. And it just goes to show what a Des Moines can do when it is being ignored by the enemy. As for the matchmaking, it is very, very favorable. There's just two other tier 10s on my team, and that also makes that the enemy team has three tier 10s. A Gearing, a Shimakaze, and a Zhao. Everything else is tier 8. One tier 9 on every team, and that's it. Now, if you see a Des Moines, if you can, try to prioritize it. It is too much of a threat to ignore. And that is something that the enemy members of the team have not quite understood yet. Which I will be happily punishing them for. Now, I'm putting the ship in a pretty aggressive position towards A. I'm not sailing directly into A, because I don't want to start eating torpedoes right away. But I want to be in a position where I can support the gearing that's off to my port beam. And with the gearing alive and providing him with potential radar support and AG rounds, we should be able to cap A and potentially knock down one of their destroyers early, should they show their face. On my right, we have a really aggressive Mogami, as well as a Benson moving up. And to my stern, I have two Bismarcks. Very good brawler-class battleships, but... You never know exactly what these guys will do. Sometimes you're going to see a Bismarck really, really aggressively pushing in. And then a minute later, you can see another Bismarck who is sniping on the edge of the map. The latter of which is, of course, far more frustrating to watch. Now, the gearing said no radar, so I'm not actually getting it engaged. I just want to get a couple of shots in. And considering that the gearing is not being contested at A, I don't really need the radar. We do know that there's two Turpitzes, a North Carolina and two Atagos punching their way towards our own fleet. So, with the exceptionally good AP and a broadside on the Atago, I aim for the Citadel. I don't quite get it. I didn't really expect that I wasn't going to get a Citadel as the AP rounds on the Des Moines are absolutely fantastic. And there you go, there's your first Citadel. Six and a half thousand damage in the Salvo. It's only one, though. Could have been a bit better. Keep adjusting my aim, keep trying to get another Citadel. But rounds of uh, 2650 per salvo, well, I'll take some of those. Torpedo salvo comes in, I start backing away. The gearing, fortunately, is not in any way in harm's way, and we have two aggressive Bismarcks. Now, what was helping in this match is that these Bismarcks were in a division. We have Sullian and Adrian pushing together, and this is, for me and a cruiser, an absolute dream. Because not only are they absorbing a lot of the fire and thereby not taking away from my hit pool, but they're also putting all their secondary guns, as well as the main guns, in a very favorable position, while putting their ships at a significant amount of risk from torpedo attack. In the meanwhile, we have a Turpitz which is pushing round. Now, I'm trying to get away from this Turpitz as fast as possible in reverse, keeping my bow on to make sure that I don't take too much damage from him. But his torpedoes have a range of 6, so I should be safe at this stage. A massive salvo of torpedoes heads towards the Turpitz, and I switch targets as I know that the first Turpitz is going to go down. There you go. Fox ship in the gearing got his first kill on the Turpitz. Moving on. Second Turpitz, Rudy... 2222 is pushing forward and once again seemingly just completely oblivious to my presence here as I keep pummeling his superstructure with AP rounds. Now if you ignore a gearing or sorry if you ignore a Des Moines and you keep taking 6,000 to 4,000 damage salvos every five seconds then you're either not very situationally aware or you don't think that the Des Moines is that big of a threat. Well, my dear Turpitz, let me inform you that it is.
unfortunately, towards the stern, I get a little bit less effective. But the Turpitz is trying to flee. I'm perfectly presenting me with his port side. Which I happily take advantage of. And I keep scoring massive salvos on this guy. And that's the torpedo salvo that this Turpitz was trying to get away from. There's another salvo from the Benson or the Gearing. I assume it's the Gearing. But unfortunately, that one missed as well. It can, however, still hit the North Carolina, sorry, the North Carolina that is pushing forward as well. But those torpedoes unfortunately missed that battleship too. And once again, we have a third contender, yet another battleship, which seemingly is looking over its shoulder as one of the surviving Bismarcks is pushing forward and trying to scare off that North Carolina. And apparently is slugging it out with the Turpits and Otago and a Fletcher. So I need to get through this North Carolina as quickly as possible in order to help out my Bismarck, which, unfortunately, I was way too late at. So I should have been way more aggressive. But I had such a fantastic time pummeling all of these ships into submission. I mean, I may have taken a secondary hit, but other than that, I really have not been shot at at all. And this North Carolina finally understands what's going on. He finally understands why his hit point pool is melting away. And with a salvo and a fire combination, he just goes down. Switching fire. And now the Turpitz does not have a Bismarck to fire at anymore, so now it's going to be me. Next salvo goes in. He is at 10 clicks, but that should still be in a position where I can do a bit of damage with AP. I, however, want to keep this guy on fire. I want to put damage on time over him on uh, making sure that he doesn't get too many hit points back. Should he be able to repair? In the meanwhile, the A cap, we have an Otago approaching, and there is a Fletcher somewhere nearby. It was last seen directly south of A cap, but we don't know exactly where that guy went. He doesn't have a lot of options. He could have gone to A, he could be going for me. Those are the two options that I really see, as they already have the B cap. Now, at an angled turpits like this, I just keep firing HE. He is too much of um, a difficult target to penetrate with AP. I mean, a cruiser I could get away with. A battleship like Turpitz is much, much more heavily armored and is probably going to shrug off my HE, correction, my AP rounds. And there's the Fletcher. Throw the ship into a turn. The fire, or the last salvo, actually finally nailed the Turpitz. And now it's the Fletcher's time to run. The next salvo of the Fletcher also tried to hit me. Turning away, actually very, very much avoided his torpedo salvo and could have been way worse. The Fletcher keeps running. I'm burning in two places, so I need to put that out, but I was too busy firing at this ship. There's also an Otago firing at me. Now, I hope that the other two destroyers are coming to my aid as quickly as possible. It's the Benson and the Gearing. The Fletcher is now making smoke. He's trying to get his uh, uh, ship into cover. Unfortunately for him, I'm a radar cruiser, so your smoke does not impress me. Salvo after salvo keeps going in. And I was actually getting a bit worried about the next ship that was coming up. That's the Otago right there. You can see he's going broadside. With the last salvo, I immediately reload to AP, look for the Citadel, and there we go. That's this front turret knocked out. Let's see if I can get the Citadel. I need him down. There's 15,000 after getting two Citadel hits. Secondaries are joining the fray. And there's the Torpedo Salvo. As I turn away, hoping to avoid these torpedoes. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the Benson next to me was doing. He's putting up a smoke screen. He's just a touch too late. And unfortunately, I almost nudge him into the torpedo. And he was just trying to avoid it. But... There was nothing really that I could have done. I possibly should have taken the torpedo myself. Because I can repair my health and he cannot. But I apologize to him. He says it's no problem and we're just going to keep going. So, current status. 161,000 damage done. 3 citadels, 6 fires, 235 hits. And we are pretty far away from the rest of the enemy fleet. So, turning circle waiting for my repair team to come back so I can get some more health back, and heading towards the B-cap, 
which should be heavily defended by a gearing time, or actually two gearings that we have there, as well as the turpits. But the New Orleans is still a potential threat, especially if it can go after those three destroyers that are out there. And uh, turns out that they really didn't need my help there. The Otago finishes off one gearing, and our gearing finishes off the New Orleans, leaving just an Amagi a Turpitz and one Shimakaze, which was last seen at sea, and is probably still there, considering that we are capping the zone. A correction that they are capping the zone. Now sometimes you have these, I don't know, just lulls in the fighting. There's just not that much going on. And all you can do is cruise towards the enemy, go get coffee, brush your teeth, I don't know. You're going to just sit there waiting, which I find that you don't have as much as some of the other games. But World of Warships definitely has it. And you can see that I am quite nicely keeping up with the Benson, which I believe is cruising at about 36 knots. I'm tailing behind at 33. I took a bit of hit points back thanks to the repair team and I still have two repair charges left. The ships are just outside of my range. The Amagi and the Turpits are just there at 17.3 clicks, whereas my main firing range is 15.8. And with that, I still need to be a bit patient. And unfortunately, they're heading away. So I'm really hoping to get a bit more damage in on these guys. And considering that their hit points are pretty high, they have uh, 100 and, correction, 62,000 on the Turpits. And the other one I cannot quite see. But it is definitely not very low health. So there should be some damage left to farm. Now the ship is inside of my firing range. I should have been firing, but I was a bit distracted. And I thought that it wouldn't really matter if I would be firing at him right now. So I'm just cruising towards him. Not actually giving my position away, but even if I did... He'd be way too distracted with the gearing, the turpits, the Kagero, and potentially the other gearing that are also punishing him. 14 clicks out. Let's see if I can do some damage. I fire the last of my AP, which I should have reloaded to, a uh, sorry, to HE. Massive, massive opportunity there, which I just completely uh, mistook. And if you notice the minimap, I'm actually firing at the wrong ship. The Turpids is presenting the smallest possible profile. The Amagi is heading towards me and is continuing to make a turn, trying to present a uh, smaller angle towards the Turpids. And that's my Turpids, not theirs. But instead, giving me a pretty broad profile. But I just... Total vision on this Turpids. Really, really bad move by me here. I should have done way better. Should have done a lot more focusing on what's around me instead of just trying to keep this guy on fire with my HE rounds. And at this range, potentially, with this angle, I could switch to AP and get some damage in. Now, turns out that the Amagi was quite pissed with the Benson, took him out, and now the Amagi is very close to me. He's six and a half clicks out, and I still didn't notice him. That's how tunnel visioned I was. And then I go, oh, hello. Crap, there's the Amagi. Switching to AP. He's presenting a pretty nice angle. And if you're wondering what that circle with the angle is, that's the Navigator mod. It's a mod that is part of Aslane's mod pack, and it really helps out with trying to identify whether you can or uh, probably shouldn't be firing HE or AP. Um, as far as I know, it is just presenting information that's already in the game, so this is not an illegal mod, to my knowledge. Anyway, I keep scoring medal after medal. We got the high caliber, we got the confederates. The Turpitz, in the meanwhile, is taking a significant beating. He's down to 3,000, and the Amagi is down just to 7,000. Turpitz fires, takes out my rear gun, which I wasn't using anyway, and we just continue to fire on this battleship. There's not a lot left of him. Turpitz gets taken out, and the Amagi is soon to follow. And there's the results. Now, in case you're wondering why I didn't show the last Amagi being killed, the reason for that is that when the replay ends, the game immediately crashes, and thereby ruining my replay file or my recording. So, yes, I did in fact kill the Amagi, 
but with uh, showing that, that would have been a bit of a problem. Anyway, lots and lots of damage done. A little over 200,000, and that was immediately a new damage record for me. Lots of main gun hits, uh, shot down some spotter aircraft as there were no CVs in this mission. Assisted in the capture of the A zone, a couple of target hits from my secondaries, but I find that the Des Moines secondaries are really nothing to be that impressed about. A couple of citadels, a couple of fires, and a lot of money for a tier 10. If you look at the team score, 2570 base XP there. Getting a Kraken as well, so I get some nice new XP flags to go with that. As for the detailed report, look at the battleships. Turpids, almost 50,000 damage. North Carolina, 40,000. Amagi, 25,000. Another Turpids, 15,000. If you ignore the Des Moines, then the Des Moines will remind you consistently of its presence right about every five seconds. And it's going to remind you with five to 6,000 damage salvos. If you're a cruiser, it can remind you even harder, considering that the damage that you can do to cruisers is around the range of 15,000 on an average couple of citadels. Now, I got all of this money with getting the uh, Type 20 camouflage. That really, really helps. It buffs the amount of credits that you get, that's the plus 20, and it limits the amount of service costs that you pay by 50%. So on a tier 10, I made 400,000 credits, which is something that, for example, on my tier 6 Dunkirk class battlecruiser slash, well, battleship, I don't even make it there. So uh, turning your tier 10s into semi-premiums and then having a game like this can really, really fatten your credit account. And with that, allowing you to buy some new stuff as well, of course. So, that's the Des Moines. Next time you see one, don't dismiss it so easily. It is a very, very dangerous ship, if left, unignor if left ignored. And um, next time you see one, either start shooting it immediately, kill off those rapid-fire 203mm, or start heading in the other direction. And whatever you do, don't show your broadside. Anyway, that's it for this week. Um, I still have the friends list or the friends code down in the description so that if you register through my friends, um, friends referral account, then you do get a premium ship after your first battle. You get a tier 2. And after you've reached tier 6, you get another one. And with that, uh, you get two tier... Or actually, you get two premium ships for free. So if you want to make advantage of that, then be quick, because I believe there's only one charge left. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that you can only get one more. So be quick and join me in World of Warships. If you like to division with me, you're welcome to. I'm on basically every day with this game. It's one of my favorite games at the moment. So just add me on the friends list, Stealth17, and I'll be happy to division with you. I am on EU, is of course noted. Now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more World of Warships.